Claw 2.1 is here and apparently it's coming with loads of updates. 200k context window, fewer hallucinations, system prompts, function calling and tool usage. Now there's loads that we could dive into, but today let's look into function calling and tool usage. So let's start with a brand new Jupyter notebook and we'll call it Claude Function and Tools. So we'll name it and quickly move on to installing the dependencies. So we obviously want to install Anthropic. The fused XML allows us to parse the XML tree and requests allows us to make API requests. So I've already got all of those installed. And so next we can import the libraries. Now there are a few libraries here, but we'll explain each of them as they're used. Sweet. Now we can set up some basic parameters based on what we're actually trying to accomplish. So we'll need to prompt Anthropic, hence the API key. And we'll also need a prompt. I can see outside my window, but let's ask what's the weather like in London. And finally, we need the new model, Claw 2.1. Next, we can go on to define the tools. And when we say tools, these are the functions that we want the language models to be able to call. And so in order to answer our question, the language model needs to be able to do two things. One, it needs to be able to get the weather based on the location when provided the latitude and longitude. And two, it needs to be able to get the latitude and longitude of the place that we actually give it. So first we create a function that is simply an API request that allows it to get the weather based on latitude and longitude. And the second function is similar. If you provide it a place, it should return to you the latitude and longitude based on another API. API request. So one useful piece of information to know is that Anthropic's Claude is actually trained on markup. And that means the best way to guide the language model is to use these XML, HTML style tags with the angled styled brackets, right? And when we talk about function calling, what we're actually referring to is the ability for the language model to return predictable output that you can go on to use and call functions. So first we have to provide these markup descriptions for each of the functions. So for example, with get weather, first we wrap everything in tool description. Then we provide the tool name, which is the name of the function get weather. And the description for the get weather function is to return the weather data for a given latitude and longitude. Thereafter, we provide the parameters. And within the parameters, we have the latitude of type string with its description and the longitude of type string and its description. And all of that should make a lot of sense based on our get weather function with latitude of type string and longitude of type string. And we'll do the same for our function where we get the latitude and longitude based on the place. And again, it's the same format with the tool descriptions, the tool names, the description, parameters, etc. Now, the final thing we need to do is concatenate these tool descriptions. Now that we've got that, let's create our prompt template that will actually use the tools. So first we tell the language model that in this environment, it has a select group of tools it can use to answer a user's question. Then we provide it with a schema or a format for how it can call each of those functions. And we restrict it to being able to call them only one at a time. And we also tell it that once it's called it, it has to wait for the response before invoking another function. Then we can provide it with the list of tools that are available, which is our tool string that we just concatenated above. And then finally, we give it the user input, which in this case is the question, what's the weather like in London? And and then we tell the language model it's time to respond. Now that seems quite straightforward, but it's actually a powerful pattern that gets the language model to respond in the way that we want it to. So next we can give it the power to actually call the functions with this simple bit of code. What it does is it takes the tool name and the parameters in dictionary format to allow for key value pairs. And it gets the right function from the global environment and passes in the parameters, which means you can call any function dynamically. Also, we need to create a function that will format our results into proper XML structure. So we essentially create the function results, which consists of the tool name and the output. This is so that we can feed back the results into the language model in a way that is easily understood. Now, one more function to convert the XML e-tree into a Python dictionary. Now we need this to extract out our parameters from the results, which comes in XML e-tree format, into a dictionary with key value pairs. Now I'm not going to explain this function because it's just aggressive manipulation, but I will include a link to the code in the description below. And with that, we're all good to go. Let's create our final run logic that will actually loop through the functions until we get our final result. So first we'll initialize our Anthropic instance with our API key. Then we'll create our run loop function, which takes in the prompt. Now we'll print the prompt, but as we append things to the prompt, as we go through the loop, we'll continue to print those things out to the console as well. And now we can enter the function calling loop. And so the first step is to actually send the prompt to Claude, but please note the stop sequences. One, the end of the assistance response and the start of the humans. And two, the end of a function call. And from the result, we can extract out the partial completion, the stop reason and the stop sequence. Then we can append the partial completion to the prompt. And as promised, we can print that out to the console. Now, if it ultimately stopped because it finished calling a function, then we need to provide it with the results of the function before it continues. And so first, we find where the function call starts. And if we can find that tag, because we know the stop was triggered by the function call, we can extract the contents of that tag by starting at the start index plus 16, which is the length of the function calling tag string. After that, we can extract out the tool name using an element tree from the diffused XML package that we installed previously. And if the tool name isn't found, we'll break the loop. And so we can strip that variable and then do the same for parameters. 
And again, if it's not found, we can break the loop. Otherwise, we can use this eTree Python to dictionary function that we defined before to convert the parameters XML to a Python dictionary. And then we just extract our parameters. After we've got the tool name and the parameters, we can pass in those variables and call the function. Now let's add the stop sequence that was previously cut off back to the prompt. And then we can just format the result by providing both the tool name and the output. And we can append that back to the prompt and print it. Now that's it for that section. However, if the language model stopped for any other reason, except a function call coming to an end, then we should just break the loop. Now I know that felt a little bit long winded, but that function literally just created an agent using Claude, which was something that was previously quite difficult to do well. Now let's go on to make the actual request. And we can do that by feeding the question, what's the weather like in London right now into the prompts template that we created earlier. If you wanted to see what that looks like, we tell the LLM it has access to tools. We tell it how to invoke those tools. And then we provide it with our list of tool strings, the tool descriptions. And then finally, we ask the question, what's the weather like today in London? And then we await the LLM's response. So if we call that final function now on this prompt, let's see if it works. So there's our initial prompt. And now we've started to get some interesting responses. So the first response was actually the function call invoking the get latitude and longitude based on the location London. And then we provide the assistant back with the API response in the format that it knows and we append that onto the prompt. Then the assistant goes on to take those results and places them into another function call where it seeks to get the weather based on the latitude and longitude for London. And then again, it waits for the response and we provide it with the function results that come from the API. And then finally, the assistant looks at the function results and uses that to tell us that actually London is pretty cold today at 9.5 degrees Celsius. <laughs> And funny enough, it's even got my local time and everything. Great. Now this is really cool, but the other benefit is that it's also very generic. So let's add one more completely different tool just so we can show how easy it is to extend this. Let's change the question to find out the difference in price between cryptocurrency Ethereum and Maker. Now to do this, we need to add one more tool. We need to be able to fetch the price of a cryptocurrency and we can hard code that to be in dollars. We also need to add one more function description where we give the name of the cryptocurrency as a lowercase string and it returns back the value in dollars. And then we can append that onto our tool string. So run and run. Now, fingers crossed, that's it. Hopefully that should just work. And so if we go back down to make a request, we should have a similar prompt with new tools and a new request at the end. Perfect. And now if we tell it to run this prompt, it gets the price of Ethereum, which is 2,031 US dollars. And it gets the price of Mako, which is 1,467 US dollars. It then does the difference between the two prices, which is $564. Just like that, we're giving the LLM superpowers, the ability to access APIs, which ultimately means it can interact with any number of tools. And we do all of this with Claude 2.1. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please make sure to like, share and subscribe to support the channel. And also let me know if you have any thoughts, questions or comments in the comment section below. And finally, if you have any special requests, also let me know in the comment section. All right, cheers.